Gupta, senior journalist and now senior advisor at the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Thank you. You're my first guest tonight, Kanchanda. Now, this week we saw something. We saw that, you know, uh, because the beating, the retreat ceremony did away with uh, the, the, the theme, abide with me, a group of people got extremely angry. They said, how can you remove abide with me and have the beating, the retreat ceremony? Abide with me, they almost started saying, was part of the history of India. And the worst part was they were all shooting off Mahatma Gandhi's shoulder. They all said, you know, this is Mahatma Gandhi's favorite hymn. And I was saying, yeah, you know, by the way, you know, it also played when the Titanic sank. But they said, no, no, it is Mahatma Gandhi's favorite hymn, almost as if Mahatma Gandhi wrote Abide With Me. Why were they shooting off Mahatma Gandhi's shoulder? And why were they getting so sentimental about this Abide With Me hymn or song or whatever you call it? Now, it is not something which was uh, actually inherited by us from the British, so it wouldn't really be fair to blame them for this inheritance. Uh, this is a practice which began in a minor way in 1952, between 1952 and 1961, mil military bands would be invited to perform. And not much care was given to what were they playing, what were they performing, uh, it just happened. In 1961, when Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth was visiting India, uh, on uh, that year, the beating retreat was brought forward. It was on the 27th of January uh, because she, she was leaving soon after. They redesigned the entire, uh, the entire beating retreat ceremony was redesigned and a whole host of British tunes were built into the list of tunes that were played at the ceremony. Uh, I, I, I would not be surprised if uh, uh, Abide With Me was included on that occasion. It has no roots in India. It has no roots in Indian history. It's a, it's a Scottish uh, hymn uh, which uh, probably used to be performed in churches across India when the British were ruling this country. To to cry on and on about it is is simply mind-boggling. Now you have to look at it in the larger context. What the prime minister uh, is doing is something which should have been done decades ago. Till uh, you said that you have been to Oxford and to Cambridge, uh, uh, other uh, Indians who have gone to Oxford and Cambridge, many of them have uh, written uh, highfalutin books and thesis on post-colonialism, on colonialism, post-colonialism, and decol decolonizing the colonies. Now, those were only vacuous words, hot air words, uh, which, uh, which were spoken to each other, and they did not really translate into action on the ground. How much of India, how much of Indian law whether it is the IPC, whether it is the CRPC, whether it is civil laws, whether it is personal laws, how much of it was decolonized in these last 75 years? Very little, I would think, and, and, I, and, and I, I, I could say with great confidence, very little of it has actually been decolonized. Our historiography is a, a colonial product. Our system of government and governance is a colonial product. The way we run our schools, colleges, universities, it is a colonial product. The way we clothe ourselves, the way we eat uh, to prove that we are quote unquote, unquote civilized, all these are colonial hangovers. So what the prime minister is trying to do is to bring about actual decolonizing of India. And uh, 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 this is, this is coinciding that. with the 75th year of India's independence. Uh, Kanchanda, critical point here. If anyone else talks about decolonizing India, it's great. But if Narendra Modi talks of decolonizing India, it's a Hindu nationalist response to British civilization. Where does the Hindu nationalist part of it come into this? No, it is nothing to do with Hindu nationalism. 
It is just pure and simple nationalism. India is a nation. India is a civilizational nation. And the idea is to uh, revert to our identity as a civilizational nation without compromising on uh, on our uh, existence as a nation among a community of nations. Now, to constantly talk of, you know, this whole thing about Hindu nationalism, it has, a, it has become a bit of a joke like fascism. So if tomorrow Narendra Modi uh, announces that a spectacular bridge will be built or a new highway will be built, people will say that is fascism. You have, it has the whole, the whole debate has been brought down to ridiculous levels. Now, if you look at it, this is not, this is not a surprise move. It begins on 23rd January last year, when Victoria Memorial in Kolkata, which uh, which which is also a relic of the British era of uh, the British Raj, uh, it was converted into a permanent Netaji museum. Now, at that time, nobody seemed to bother about it because uh, it was there was a dis the tyranny of distance came into play. Latians media didn't realize what was actually happening in Kolkata. In Kolkata, the, the most prominent um, relic of the British Raj was overnight converted into a symbol of Indian nationalism, of, of Indian freedom movement of Indian independence and of what we are today, because it showcases uh, the best digital talent, it showcases the best uh, 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 talent in, uh, yes. uh, uh, in, the, in our technology uh, okay. achievements. It, it is a fabulous museum and I would recommend everybody to visit it, uh, because it shows the transition from being Victoria Memorial to Netaji Museum. Absolutely. Well, I, I just think we should look around and we should see that if we are surrounded by British relics honoring the colonizers instead of our heroes, we need to start a movement to remove all Raj relics. Thanks for starting that debate. Kanchan Gupta, thank you very much.